Welcome back to the channel, back down here in the studio, and we are gonna talk a lot about tents today. If you thought I wasn't gonna do the plug, we're just doing it outside. And we got a freaking bluebird day here in Columbus, gorgeous. Click that subscribe button, click the notification bell. We do go live a lot. We have a podcast too, check that out. And if you want some sick merch, there's a link in the description. Back to the video. In today's video, we are gonna go through everything that you need to know about tents. We're gonna talk about single wall versus double wall, freestanding versus non-freestanding, uh, nylon versus DCF, different types of tent manufacturers and everything in between. My hope is that if you're someone who's looking to get into tent camping or someone who's looking to just learn more about tents in general, that this video will help you. The first thing to know about tents is let's talk about something called single wall versus double wall tents. Now in the past, the vast majority of tents were double wall. And what that means is literally what it means is there's two walls. So generally that means there's an inside um, kind of mesh bug netting and a rain fly on top of it. So most people are kind of familiar with like the concept of a rain fly. That's the double wall. Here is the Z-Pax Altiplex. I've got a sweet video on that. Check it out if you want to know more about this tent. But this is a good representation of what a single wall tent is. So. There's one wall here, right? Just this layer of fabric that's protecting you from the outside. I know it is Dyneema, but there's one wall. On contrast, we go over here to a double wall tent that I'm in the process of setting up. I haven't finished setting it up yet, but you can see what I'm talking about. We're talking about single or double wall. So this tent has a inner mosquito net right here that I'm kind of touching and then as you can see right above me and on the other side, up here, there's a rain fly. So what you can do is, A, you can set this tent up separately. So if you know it's not gonna rain, you can just set up uh, this, this, this mosquito net. Um, so you can get a lighter footprint if you don't wanna take this. And then B, you know, because it is a double wall tent, right? The condensation is going to collect all on this fly right here and not on your tent. You know, the past five, 10 years, we've seen an increase in Cuban fiber tents and other kinds of tent designs to try and keep it lighter. And that's where we see this single wall design. So single wall means there's no separate rain fly on the tent. You just have one waterproof layer that's separating you from the outside. Let's talk about kind of the pros and cons and why this matters. So the, the obvious pro to a single wall tent is it's lighter, right? You don't have two different types of fabric. It'll pack down smaller. You have one layer, it's a lot lighter. Now, these single wall tents tend to be DCF or something called Cuban fiber. I have a great video talking about what Cuban fiber or Dyneema is. If you wanna learn more, check that out, right? Up in one of these corners. I'm pretty sure they make single wall tents that are not Dyneema, but I haven't really seen that many of them and it's generally much more of a thing with Dyneema tents. So a double wall tent can be better in a variety of conditions. And the, the biggest difference for me is in a double wall tent design, you won't have condensation build up on the inside of the tent. Where I backpack in the Midwest, it's humid. It's humid in a lot of parts of the country, you know, anything other than out West. And what will happen in human environments is overnight, when the temps start to cool down, if there's a lot of moisture in the air, that water will collect and condense on surfaces that cool down. So it mainly happens a lot more in the winter when you get a lot cooler temps overnight. But what will happen is you'll wake up on the inside of like a single wall tent and you'll have condensation that's gonna be like forming on the top of the tent, on the sides of the tent. And this can be an issue because one, it can drip down on you. And in the winter, if it drips down on you and then freezes, that's a problem. If you're using real down and it drips down on the down, that's a problem. So you can run into some issues and I have in tiny single wall tents where like maybe my sleeping bag is up against the wall 
and it gets wet overnight and in the winter that can be a real problem. Going along with that, another disadvantage to the single wall design and it plays into this whole condensation thing is ventilation. So with a double wall design, usually you know the inner layer is mesh and the outer layer is like a nylon but at the ground the base of the tent usually there's a gap between the two so you can have airflow come up into the tent and kind of help you with that condensation so a double wall design you're going to have less issues with things condensing on the inside of the tent it'll still condense it'll just be on the rain fly and you'll have better ventilation so some pros there my advice would be probably go with a single wall design but if cost is a factor and you're, if you're like always in humidity, maybe not. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> we tend to favor weight over all things. And uh, now I do, I, I'm, I'm lucky enough, I do have single and double wall tents. So I just pick which one based on what I'm doing. But we generally tend to prefer single wall designs. Next big thing to discuss is a freestanding versus a non freestanding tent. And the, the easiest way to describe this difference is a non freestanding tent is usually something that uses trekking poles to support itself and must be staked down. So freestanding versus not freestanding. Now, unfortunately, the, the two tents I brought here are both non-freestanding tents. So I've got a, a, a Durston X-Pin 2P that I'm in the process of setting up, and I've got a Z-Pax Ultiplex right here. These are not freestanding tents. They both require the use of trekking poles. And you know, as we kind of talked about, there are pros and cons to that, but um, you can get single pole, multi-pole, they even make freestanding tents, uh, non-freestanding tents that require more than two trekking poles. So um, a good example, I've got two, so I've got a, a two-person non-freestanding tent right here, and then over here, I've got a one-person. A freestanding tent, like a classic tent with the poles, you know, you can lift up, you can move around, you can place it somewhere. You don't necessarily have to stake it down. And there are pros and cons to, to each design. The biggest pro to a non freestanding tent, kind of like the single versus double wall thing is they tend to be a lot lighter because you're not carrying tent poles and you're using your trekking poles to kind of build the shelter. Obviously, if you're someone who doesn't use trekking poles, this could present a bit of a problem. So you've got weight, you know, freestanding tents tend to be a little bit heavier because you have to bring poles. Another difference is uh, freestanding tents, they're usually a lot easier to set up because you just need to slap some poles in there and, and hook on the bug net and everything and you're good to go. A non-freestanding tent, they can be a pain to set up because you've got trekking poles that need to go up, you've got a uh, stake out guy lines and you kind of got to you I, I've yet to set up a non freestanding tent where I just got it up on the first try without tweaking any of the stakes versus a freestanding tent get the tent poles in get it up you may or may not need to stake it out it doesn't matter but the freestanding tents gonna weigh more and non freestanding tents because they tend to be you know ultralight brands they tend to be more expensive because they're made of Dyneema however there are a lot of good non-freestanding tents that are out on the market now. Um, Durston's making some good, cool ones. REI actually makes some good, lightweight, non-freestanding tents. So there are more options. My advice, if you're someone new to camping, I would go with a freestanding design. Or if you're someone who camps a lot in areas where staking a tent is really hard. Like if you're going <clears throat> out in Utah or out west where you're camping on rocks, uh, and getting a stake in the ground is difficult. Having a freestanding tent will help you a lot. Let's talk a little bit about tent materials. So, uh, back, you know, back in the day, they made canvas tents. We don't we don't do that anymore. Um, the, the vast majority of like your big box tents are going to be a nylon or a sill nylon. You also have Dyneema tents. Now, Dyneema tents much more expensive, much more lighter, and almost always single wall. So let's talk about Cuban fiber tent. DCF, Dyneema Composite Fabric, I'm old school, I call it Cuban Fiber, versus a Sil Nylon tent. So, as you can you can really see, this is actually, um, let me get out of the sun here, this is actually kind of a, like a shiny nylon, much more like a nylon, like what you're used to, a very kind of fluffy, not very rigid, and can pack down very small, versus the Dyneema tent over here, um, it's kind of like a waxy coating if you've never seen one. It, it's kind of shiny, waxy, and it doesn't kind of crumple up um, to as low of a volume as that tent does. But of course, this tent right here 
Um, it's a one person tent, weighs about 15 and a half ounces. This tent right here is a two person tent and it weighs about two and a half pounds. This is a great example of the compressibility. So this is the Z-Pax Ultiplex, that tent I just showed you. 15 ounces, one person. This is the Durston X-Mid 2P. Two, two and a half pounds and a two person. So much bigger tent, much heavier, but compresses down way smaller than the Cuban tent. Once again, if you're getting into backpacking and you're just starting, I would go with like a used sill nylon tent. Sill nylon tents are gonna be lighter than nylon. They're still gonna be waterproof. You will get a little bit of sag in the sill nylon, but it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, and they, they pack down smaller, which is kind of nice. The, the, the disadvantages of sill nylon are, once again, they'll sag. If you put tension on them for too long, that the tent will sag a little bit. And also something that is kind of a legitimate thing is if the tent gets wet, it gets super heavy. And, you know, not a huge deal if you can dry it out, but you could add a pound or two in water weight to your pack just because you're putting a wet tent in your pack. And so it just, it, it absorbs water and stays wet. However, sill nylon, nylon, half the price of Dyneema. So if cost is a concern, I would go with sill nylon. I have the Durston X-Mid 2P. It's a nylon based tent. It's fantastic. I, I really like it. So you still can get great tents that are not Dyneema. However, Dyneema is kind of the mainstay for like ultralight, you know, cool tents nowadays and like all the, you know, all the super, super niche, awesome, high quality, like ultralight tents. They're all gonna be Dyneema. And, uh, you know, I have a Dyneema tent. It's fantastic. I have to baby it a little bit, but it's so light. And you know, once again, we we will generally sacrifice a little bit of comfort for a big weight savings. I wanna talk a little bit about tent brands because you can get, um, it is the spectrum, right? You can get super cheap Chinese tents on Amazon. You can get thousand dollar handmade in America Dyneema tents from places like Hyper Like Mountain Gear and then everything in between. Here's what I'm gonna recommend. If you were looking for like a mid-range, good starter tent, I would honestly look at the REI brand tents. One, REI is a good company we like to support. Two, their tents are good, they're not super cheap. And three, they have a fantastic return policy. So if you get the tent and you don't like it, you can just take it back. And four, check out something called the REI Garage Sale. We have a video on that. And you can get super, super cheap used tents for really, really cheap. And, and they're a good brand to check out. Moving up from like the discount to you know, big box tents, you've got brands like MSR, you've got brands um, like Big Agnes. I'm a big fan of Big Agnes tents. MSR tents, Big Agnes tents are awesome. They're a little bit more expensive than REI brand, but they're, you know, they're a little bit lighter, a little bit more beefier. Um, I've, I've used several Big Agnes tents and you can't go wrong with them. Moving on to the upper range of tents, you've got the expensive cottage vendor Dyneema tents. So things like Hyperlite Mountain Gear, Z-Packs. You also have companies like uh, Six, Moon, Six, Moon De Six Moon Designs. They make uh, a little bit more cost-effective, lighter tents, but these are the cottage, cottage brand tents. I've never used Hyperlite Mountain Gear. I've used many Z-Pax tents and you can't go wrong with Z-Pax. Lastly, I wanna talk a little bit about environmental conditions and how that might play into using a tent. I, I talked a little bit about it when we were talking about freestanding versus non-freestanding, but where you backpack will make a difference. I live in the Midwest. It's woodsy, it's wet, and I have to build my tent loadouts appropriately. You know, we are always dealing with rain. I have to take a good waterproof um, tent. We're always dealing with humidity. So in the winter, when it gets cold, I, I generally prefer a double layer tent. So picking a tent based on how you backpack is important. So if you don't backpack in the winter and you don't backpack anywhere where it gets super wet all the time, I'd say go with a single layer tent. If you have a lot of money to spend and you care about weight, I would get a Dyneema tent, um, all things equal. But I do wanna talk about how like, your backpacking style can and should influence the kind of tent you're looking at. And then lastly, you know, at the end of the day, go to a place like REI, go to a sporting goods store, get in these tents, set them up, watch YouTube videos. Um, how easy a tent is to set up matters. And uh, freestanding tents are way easier to set up. I've been in the Great Smoky Mountains in November when it was raining and snowing and sleeting and 
I luckily had a freestanding tent and I was so happy to just be able to erect a shelter super quickly. So things, all these things matter when picking out a tent. So that is it for this video. I'm, I'm hoping we covered, you know, high level, all the things you need to know about tents and hopefully these tips help you picking out a tent and make you a better tent camper. Bye-bye.